All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to show about 45 seconds of this video. And then I'm going to utterly destroy what this video is teaching. All right? And I just want to demonstrate for you this is not a, you know, a, a confusion or misunderstanding. It's an outright lie. And it's not from God, it's from the devil. And I want to make this very easy for you to see. Alright, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack exactly what they say. So let's listen first. The world waits with bated breath as the mysterious rapture sign becomes clear. An awesome ceremony for the third temple takes place, paving the way for a potentially earth-shaking revelation that could change the course of human history forever. A ceremony commemorating the completion or dedication of the third temple was just held, and the news story focused on this fact. The rapture sign at the center of the ritual is something that has special meaning in the eyes of those who hold certain religious or eschatological views. The Hebrew prophets predicted that the exiles of Israel would one day return and that the temple would be rebuilt in the end times. Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Amos are just a few of the many prophets in the Hebrew Bible who predicted the return of the Jewish people to the land of promise and the rebuilding of the temple. In times, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Amos. Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Amos. So we're going we're gonna to cover what they say, and then I even got one from Jeremiah. All right, just to hammer this point home and so there's no confusion so there's no doubt that you can have 100 percent confidence in the Word of God and what it teaches and hopefully this will clear it up as clear as day right so first of all let's go to the first one uh, or no, I don't remember which one was the first and one? that the temple would be rebuilt in the end times Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Amos. Alright, let's instead of doing that, let's just go to Isaiah because this is the one that I remember hearing John Hagee uh, use to claim that we have to support Israel over there in the Middle East. Alright, and that's from Isaiah 66, verse verse 8. But let me read verse 7 first. Before she travailed, she brought forth before her pain came, she delivered a man, delivered of a man child. Forgive me. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Alright, so what is this talking about? Well, this is obviously talking about Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. Alright, and so once Jesus came about, and I, I can't pinpoint a specific time, but let me give you some evidence. Let me give you one bit of evidence here. Um, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. That when Jesus spoke this, what he's saying is, we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the nation of God. We are the children of God. So you perhaps if you've been following me, you heard me talk a lot about Revelation 20 and how uh, Satan is bound. All right, so this is what Jesus does. He bounds Satan. So one, before Jesus comes along, there's one country, one nation of God. Outside of that nation is many nations. And those nations are deceived by the devil. All right, so here comes Jesus, and he makes the kingdom of, of God available to whosoever believes in him and of course uh, we can go to first peter chapter 2 
get some more confirmation of that where it says ye are a holy nation a chosen generation excuse me a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy all right so clearly Jesus Christ makes available the kingdom of God to whosoever believes in him so the nation of God is born at once all right and now it's not a group of people but it's available to whosoever believes in him and this nation is born because of our Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done on the earth now we that believe in him will follow him where he has went okay so the other one let's go to Jeremiah okay remember this guy he brings up oh he brings up uh, let's see he brings up Ezekiel Isaiah and Amos but we're gonna go to Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 14 and I will be found of you saith the Lord and I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you saith the Lord and I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive that directly parallels what we read in Matthew 24 now you can't tell me the Lord Jesus Christ was ignorant of what the Old Testament says all right you're a d-a-m-n fool to think that Jesus Christ was ignorant of these verses in the Old Testament in Matthew 24 verse 31 and he shall send his angel this is the Lord speaking all right and this is Jesus Christ speaking and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other now right here in Jeremiah 29 and I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations. It's the same moment in time. It's talking about the same thing. Let's go to Amos chapter 9, verse 14. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof and they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them and I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them saith the Lord thy God now this is again another parallel we can go to Revelation chapter 21 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband uh, this new Jerusalem is the new land where we will be set and um, where we will inhabit and and all this sort of stuff there's numerous verses in the Old Testament this, this is only a few examples okay Ezekiel 37 therefore ver, starting at verse 12 therefore prophecy prophesy prophecy prophesy and say unto them thus saith the Lord God behold O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people. 
and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land then shall ye know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord now <laughs> it's so obvious that when this happens when we are gathered together this is at the end of the world at the end of this world all right we are gathered together that's when the angels gather together the elect it's the harvest it's the end of the world and it's interesting here it makes them plain right I will open your graves and of course what do we read in you know, uh, let's go to first. Let's go to First Thessalonians four. Let's do it this way. First Thessalonians four, starting at verse sixteen. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Israel. All right. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right. So this happens again at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. This is consistent all throughout the Bible. So let's go to first Corinthians 15 and notice here for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet alright so we're gonna be lifted up in the air our enemies gathered at our feet fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ now this is obvious to me I don't O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? And right here in Ezekiel 37, we read, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Uh, just you put everything together, it's so obvious. It's just, it's teaching us the same thing over and over and over again. All right? I mean, wow. Now, uh, was there one more point I wanted to make? Give me one second. Alright, so I think that's good enough. There's a lot more points I could make, but I think you get the idea here. End of the world comes, we are gathered up. When we are, when we are gathered again, I mean every single time this is mentioned, shall a nation be born at once. Now this I, I'm not going to get into, is this talking about when Jesus came? Or is this talking about the end of the world? Uh, I don't want to get into that, but I think it's when Jesus came. But nevertheless, Jeremiah, Amos, and Ezekiel. Just like this guy, he wants to, he this has these little drawings of these three guys and, and makes a false statement about them. That's not how you teach the Bible, in my opinion. And that's how you deceive people. <laughs> don't show them what the Bible actually says. Just lie about it. 
All right, so in Jeremiah, um, for example, I will gather you from all the nations. This gathering together, we read that in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. And again in Amos chapter 9, I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. They shall no more be pulled up out of their land. This again is talking about the end of the world when we are when there's the new Jerusalem. And this thing is taught all throughout the Bible, you know, in the Old Testament and confirmed in the New Testament. And it'll be solidified at the end of the world. We'll see. And again, also in Ezekiel 37. All right, I shall place you in your own land. It's not talking about 1948 Israel. All right, this is not a fulfilled prophecy. This is something that happens at the end of the world. There's no way you can teach this verse. I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. There's no way you can say, well, that happened in 1948. You got to be dumber than dog do. You really do. And who would teach this but the Jewish people, right? Because they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only kind of people that would teach this. The people that killed the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, this is the people that is teaching this. All right, and oh. Oh, I got that wrong. We both killed. Excuse me, I apologize for that. First set first Thessalonians two. Speaking of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. All right, so these people, they not only reject Jesus Christ, they reject the Bible, and they reject you and me. And they are contrary to all men. So this is the people that is teaching this nonsense. They're Jewish. They're, they might be pretending to be Christians. I don't know, pretending to be experts and scholars. I don't know. Uh, but they're not of God. And they teach things that they ought not be teaching at all. And for, uh, and really what they do is they take advantage of people that lack faith. All right, and so if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, if you don't believe that Bible is from God, you're vulnerable. Because now you're trusting in what other men say. And then right here is an example of other men claiming that these prophets said something that they didn't say. All right. So, um, now, uh, where was I going to go with this? Oh, the, well, with the third temple, maybe? I, I lost my train of thought, I think. I think I was going to... ...are just a few of the many prophets in the Hebrew Bible who predicted the return of the Jewish people to the land of promise and the rebuilding of the temple. And the rebuilding of the temple. All right, so, apparently, according to them, Jesus Christ died for no reason and he not only did he die for no reason he resurrected from the dead for no reason it's so incredibly stupid it's unbelievable right, so let's try to make this a little bit quicker I'll make this a quick point here I know I have a tendency to to uh, go on and on and on and on and on and then go on and on and on and on and on and on but it's important this is an important point if you're still hanging with me I wanna I want you to consider this alright so we'll go we'll just use these two these two places in the Bible and we'll call it a show okay so this idea of a third temple alright it's this it, you know, it's not it, whether they build a temple or not it doesn't matter it has nothing to do with the Bible whatsoever okay because Jesus already rebuilt the temple now in Daniel chapter 9 uh, it talks about uh, you know the, um, let's see the, let's see here we go. let's go start here to 
70 we I sh you know, I don't know how to handle this here. Let me just kind of start reading and go with it. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. It's talking about Jesus. I know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seventy, or I'm sorry, seven weeks, three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince shall come. I'm sorry. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determination shall be poured upon the desolate. This is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, I, how do you how do you lose sight of that, man? How do you lose sight of that? Well, so many people seem to because they're listening to other preachers talk about this. This is clearly speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ who has made an end of sins and has made reconciliation for iniquity and has brought in everlasting righteousness. All right, he did this when he laid down his life. He became the sacrifice, the perfect offering to God for our sins. He did it. He fulfilled it. It's done. So when it says he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This is when he lays down his life becoming the sacrifice, becoming the perfect offering to God for our sins. He has the he is the one that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And this is going to, this is true all, until, now all these things are true even until the consummation, which is the return, uh, return of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the consummation. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up in the air to meet the Lord, that's the consummation that's when we are changed from our corruptible bodies into our incorruptible bodies this 70 weeks was fulfilled when Jesus laid down his life he's the one that destroys the temple and he's the one that builds it back up now your body is the temple of God. I guess I have to. I just thought of another verse. We got to go to. Know ye not? No. What are you dumber than dog do? Know ye not? Let's see. First Corinthians three. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? <laughs> the people that teach this their temple stuff, they don't know it. They don't understand it. They don't care about it. They're in darkness, and they cannot see. Those of us that are in the light, we ought to be able to see it, really. Jesus Christ is the one that tore down the temple. He is the one that built it back up. Our body is the temple of God. We, you go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Um, talking about, of course, um, the creation, day 6 when God made Adam. Alright? God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, 
we are our body is the temple of God Jesus is God manifest manifest in the flesh he has he has came in to our body okay he has entered the temple and then he has destroyed the temple and then he has built the temple back up and now we that are Christ we follow him we go from this temple which is no good and we will follow him into a new temple which shall never be destroyed all right so go to John chapter 2 and Jesus is having a conversation with these Jews and Jesus answered and said unto them destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up that's what he said that's what Jesus said destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Now look, you think he's talking about this thing here, or this thing here, or that thing there, or this thing here? What do you think he's talking about? I, really, the Jews, they were, they were confounded, weren't they? Then said the Jews, forty and six doggone years was this temple in building. Wilt thou rear it up in three days? 46 years it took us to build this sucker 46 doggone years yeah what you're gonna build it up in three days are you out of your cotton picking mine what are you talking about sucker but Jesus spoke of the temple of his body and so what happened they killed the Lord Jesus didn't they? and then in three days he built it back up didn't he and he ascended to heaven and we're gonna follow him you know right to the grave right to the transformation and right to the ascension up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air when this happens it's the end of the world and our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God and devours them all and then we are set back down on a new earth with a new heaven and the whole you know that's the holy city of God coming down out of heaven and um, you know there we have everlasting life with no sorrow no crying no more death and no more pain all those things will be done away with and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new Jesus is going to make everything new this is what we're putting our hope in we're putting our hope into everlasting life and this is exactly what it's describing for us alright that's what we put our hope into we do not put our hope into some stupid you know cement dusty uh, dusty old temple you know what in the world are you guys thinking really we're not we're Christians we don't care about this crap that's all gonna be destroyed am I getting a little bit foul mouthed here I might be I might might be time to shut her down boys get a little bit too fired up we're putting our hope in eternal life. This here, this is not what we're putting our hope in at all. All right, so I better, before I get, before a couple of words slip out of my mouth, I better shut her down. Anyways, you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, please share it with me. And uh, have a great day. Huh?